this segment, we're going to be going through the Pioneer centrifugal pump end. We're going to be going over the wear ring, the impeller, the mechanical seal, and the mechanical seal reservoir. Now we're going to discuss the major components of the, of the pump end. We've got a mechanical seal oil reservoir, mechanical seal sight tube, we got a volute, we got a suction cover, we got a volute inspection cover. With the impeller inspection cover removed, you can see if there's any debris, anything lodged in your impeller, if there's any kind of abnormal wear on the impeller itself. In this segment, we're going to remove the suction cover. In order to remove the suction cover, we must first remove these eight bolts. This will allow us to get to our impeller and our wear ring. With the suction cover removed, you now have the ability to visually inspect the impeller for wear and the option to remove the impeller and access the mechanical seal without disrupting the discharge piping. Now we're going to talk about the suction cover. There's three things to talk about with the suction cover. Number one, the suction cover itself. Number two, we have an O-ring that seals the suction cover to the volute. Pioneer Pump <clears throat> uses O-rings on all their machine surfaces, on all their pumps, instead of gaskets. Third, we have a wear ring. The wear ring is a sealing surface between the suction cover and the impeller. Some of the things you want to look at with the wear ring is you want to look at the wear on the inside of the wear ring. That is where the, the most wear is going to be. So if you need to replace the wear ring, you want to drill across the outer edge of the wear ring, no deeper than the depth of the wear ring. You want to do it 180 degrees across from each other. You take a chisel, a hammer, you smack where you have drilled and the wear ring will snap into two pieces. You remove it, clean the surface, get a new wear ring. You can tap it in with a, using a brass drift and a hammer. If you happen to have a brass hammer or a lead hammer, you can also use that. It is now time to remove the volute. But before we remove the volute, I would like to make mention of the oil, mechanical oil seal reservoir tube. The tube serves as two purposes. One, to show the condition of the oil, whether it's contaminated or not. Two, to show the oil level. The oil level should never exceed halfway in the sight tube. If the oil exceeds over halfway in the sight tube, it has the possibility to blow oil out this breather. If you need to add oil or you are changing the oil, the oil fill plug is right here. As you can see in this photo, on the bottom of the brack plate, this is the drain plug to remove and drain the oil from the oil seal reservoir. Okay, before removal of the impeller, we want to make sure we drain the oil from the mechanical seal oil reservoir. By doing this, you need to remove the plug at the bottom of the brack plate. Upon removal of the impeller, we must first heat up the impeller lock screw. The impeller lock screw has Loctite on it and it needs to be loosened up so that it has easy removal of the lock screw. Be careful of the lock screw after you have heated it. You don't want to touch it unless you have proper gloves to handle the hot impeller screw. For demonstration purposes today, we are using a new pump. Depending on the length of service, you may find the impeller difficult to remove. If this is the case, we recommend you use two wedges between the back plate and the impeller to assist in removal. With the impeller removed, we now have access to the mechanical seal oil spring, the key from the keyway, and now you have access to your mechanical seal. The 
three major components of a mechanical seal are the spring, the stationary seat, and the rotating seat. Pioneer uses a tungsten carbide on the stationary seat and they use a silicon carbide on the rotating seat. While the seal is removed, you want to look at the seal, both seal surfaces and look for any imperfections or defects. Upon removal of the impeller, you may find shims. The shims are to set the clearance between the impeller and the back plate. Now it is time to remove the back plate. In order to do this, we must remove all the bolts that are on the back side. Now with the back plate removed, we can do an inspection on our O-ring surfaces, our sealing surfaces, and most importantly, we can look at the mechanical seal oil reservoir in both plates to look for any types of contamination. Now it is time to remove the seal plate. You need to remove these four bolts to remove the plate. seal housing removed, you want to do a visual inspection on the four O-rings. These O-rings are for the mounting bolts that hold the seal housing to the bearing frame. You also want to do a visual inspection of the two lip seals that are in the seal housing. 